South Carolina 28, Vanderbilt 7. Another win for the South Carolina Gamecocks. They're bowl eligible. And then they're just one game closer to ending this season and having a November to remember. Missouri, Wofford, Clemson coming up. That's all talk for later. But right now, I'm Elijah Campbell. He's Jack Veltry. This right here is the rainy, swampy scene of the crime where Jack, it was pure domination in the entire second half. Close game in the first. Diego Pavia did everything he could to keep Vanderbilt in this game, but it was not enough. The ground game for South Carolina, dominant again. The pass rush for South Carolina, dominant again. And as much as the talk is about Diego Pavia and this Vanderbilt team, my brother in Christ, I think he's going to be seeing nightmares and visions of Kyle Kennard, Dylan Stewart, Brian Thomas, Bam Martin Scott. He didn't want no part of this mess, do he? Yeah, for as much as Pavia played well tonight, I thought he was a magician out there. The guy lives up to his billing. That's kind of what Debo Williams would say. He's, a, he's everything they say he is. But South Carolina was in his face all night long. All night. And you saw kind of towards the end of the game with the two fourth down stops, the one that Peyton Williams, who was filling in for an injured DQ Smith tonight, made on the pass breakup on the far sideline over there. And then Bam Martin Scott getting right in Pavia's face and knocking down a pass trying to throw. I mean, look, South Carolina's defense is really, really damn good. And you saw it on full display tonight. Really damn good. And I'll throw another D in here. Really damn deep, right? Yeah. I mean, like, that's DQ Smith got hurt in warmups. No one knew yeah. that he was not going to play until the defense took the field and DQ Smith wasn't playing. He got hurt. Tonka had a hand injury. They thought it was a shoulder injury at first. It's a hand injury. He had to yeah. miss time. He came back in, but he wasn't 100%. That was one of my biggest things tonight. Peyton Williams stepped up. Bakari Swain stepped up on a yeah. couple of plays in the end zone to help break up what would be potential touchdowns. And then you saw on third and fourth downs, guys like Bam Martin Scott and Brian Thomas step up and make a ton of plays. It wasn't just your usual suspects of Debo Williams, of Demetrius Knight, of Dylan Stewart and Kyle Kennard. Now, granted, those guys were awesome too. Yeah. But I think tonight, you really got to see almost kind of like the eight sacks of eight different players day against Oklahoma. Yeah. It's akin to that, where you saw everybody in this defense show out and make some plays. Yeah, it was kind of like a full circle coming together moment for this team, right? Because I think the D-line all year has been outstanding. But the secondary was great. I think they had something, maybe like eight pass breakups, I think. Yeah. Like, it was an insane number. And, and no look, DPI. Yeah, and that's the great Same thing, man. Time. Like, I think Judge Carter's pass breakup in the end zone was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, again, Peyton Williams breaking up that pass on fourth down was huge. Bam Martin Scott. I mean, again, this defense flies around. They make plays. And it, it's literally everyone on this defense. You could put any – pick a random 11 to go out there. They'll probably get the job done. And I know we use this term a lot with program wins. And part of a program win – is having the adversity to be able to take injuries and have next guys step up and show a little depth. We talked about it on the defense, but on the offense side of the ball too. Second half, you didn't see much, if any, of Josiah Thompson. A little bit of a lower leg injury. That made Tree Babalade have to step up. And not only did Tree step up, he opened some massive holes for Rocket to be able to run through. And Rocket, once again, having another 100-plus yard rushing day and has now scored five touchdowns in the last two games including we are in a city with a pro hockey team, Jack Veltry. We are. A hat trick in this game against Vanderbilt. Rocket was insane tonight. Like, I think he had three or four runs more than 10 yards tonight, and two of them were 33 and 39. And he is just, when he gets space, when you give him holes, he's so tough to stop. And he is a freight train coming through. And then he also had the 40, I think it was like 43-yard touchdown catch on the dump off play. Yeah. He has been a godsend for this team. Literally everything they – I was looking it up today. He, I think, had – he's up to 10 touchdowns so far this year. And South Sorry, Carolina – yeah, South Carolina had 17 rushing all last year. He is a monster, a man amongst boys, and he is an animal out there. He is. And, and look, Lenoris too. I mean, it's kind of – it was kind of a similar script, right? Lenoris didn't get sacked at all today. But there were plenty of pressures. Yeah. Lenoris even had one breakaway play where it was the first possession of the second half, Jack Veltry. Lenoris seemingly sacked at the one or two yard line. He breaks the tackle, rolls out, finds Jared Brown for a 51 yard gain. Then Rocket Sanders scores, what, two plays later? Yeah. And that helps open up you know, a 14 0 lead. Vanderbilt was playing catch up the rest of the game the rest of the game. And for a team like Vanderbilt, whose offense is predicated so much on time of possession, 
and really milking out the clock and suffocating a football yeah. game away, they couldn't do that anymore. But part of that was because Lenoris has had another game like he did against AM where he was impossible to take down. Oh, definitely. Lenoris on that play, you know, we talk about Diego Pavia being like Johnny Manziel out there. I'm going to give Lenoris the, the edge on that. He looked like Johnny on that play right there. And it was a massive play. Because you got to remember, it came right after Case and Henry's holding penalty yep. that set them back. And then it looked like Sellers was going to take a sack. And if he did, it probably would have been about around like the five-yard line. You're talking about, oh, man, this team, they're going to have to punt. And who knows what happens if they don't even get the touchdown on that drive. If they go three and out right there and you're punting, with the way Vanderbilt's offense was moving to start the second half, you just thought, like, okay, something's got to change here. But look, man, Sellers, he continues to progress in each yes. game. And we are seeing flashes and just performances of greatness right now from him. We are. We're seeing a great version of him right now. And you saw it early in the game, too. When we talk about this offense this year, I think we were expecting more, maybe downfield passing or maybe some stretching the field. But look, early in this game, Josh Simon, your easy button out in the flat was the go-to receiver for a yeah. lot of these drives, or tight end. Nick Harbour helped move the chains yeah, a he few was great. times. The, the passing game this year for this team may never be sexy in a... It's not going to be elite. It's not going to be like but a it's gonna be Manning good, Broncos. But it's going to be good fact. enough yeah. to get the job done. Certainly. And today I feel like it was more than good enough to get the job done. Oh, most definitely. It was... Absolutely oh, fantastic. I know, man. Look, we're, I mean, look at the <laughs> we're, we're taking behind shelter us, from man. the storm. And here's the other thing that we need to also mention. Get nasty. They, they did this in the elements tonight, right? They, yes. Like Sellers well was able noted. to throw for nearly what, like 200 something yards with these conditions. Like it's not ideal, and you expected Rocket Sanders to have the big night that he did. But the fact this offense was able to do so many different things, like getting Nick Harbour involved, Josh Simon had a touchdown, ran the football efficiently. Sellers was awesome through the air. That is just the characteristics of a team that can go through just about any adversity. And that's what we that's the story of South Carolina season is that whatever the circumstances might be, no matter how rough things might be, they're able to persevere and get the job done. And now this makes three straight games after the bye week of blowouts, right? You go to Oklahoma, Man. you beat the brakes off them. It's Rank 21 out. nothing before you can blink, right? Then you go against Texas A&M at home. You beat them by 24 points. And then you have a seven-point game at halftime here, and you end up beating Vanderbilt by three touchdowns. That's three straight blowout wins, Jack Felcher. Two of these are on the road. Oh, yeah. And that's, pretty, it, that's, that's insanely hard to do in this league, given yeah. the talent that's in it. But not just that they're winning these games. I feel like it's how they're winning and how comfortably they're winning that is really making a statement. And I, not only do I think they're going to be ranked, but they're going to be ranked – Pretty high. I, I mean, I, 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 I can would see them say so. In the top twenty. If Louisville's in the top twenty in the CFP, yeah, I don't see how you can watch this football team play the game they did today and say that's not one of the twenty best football teams in America. Look, the AP poll is just—it's garbage by this point. Like, who really cares? The one everyone's going to be concerned about is on Tuesday with the college football playoff rankings. I can see this team being in the top twenty. I thought they should have cracked the top twenty-five last week. Maybe around like that twenty. Yeah. Maybe like where Missouri was at twenty-four. But they're definitely going to be in after this week. And look, they beat a great football team today. It's not like they beat some slouch. Vanderbilt no. is not – this isn't your daddy's Vanderbilt no, anymore. At this all. is a good football team. Yes, sir. And South Carolina went in here and beat the brakes off of them. Again, that's three weeks in a row, like Elijah said, where South Carolina has absolutely dominated whoever they face. And that is a real good sign in the month of November. Absolutely. Again, final score, South Carolina 28, Vanderbilt 7. I'm Elijah Campbell. He's Jack Veltry. Make sure to come in, hang out with us on Monday, Reaction Monday. We have so much to talk to about this game. We're only scratching the surface, especially what are your thoughts of how far this South Carolina team can go? There's a chance that you can be rolling into the Clemson game at the end of the year at 8-3 and three with a chance to win number nine, something that not a lot of people in this market, myself yep. included, would have anticipated. We're starting Monday morning with the early game. Jen, Bill, Preston leading all the way up, even into Jack and Tyler in the middays. Yep. Myself and Jay Phillips, 3-6. to six. We've taken your calls, 803-404-6100. It's Reaction Monday on 107.5 The Game all day long. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Again, final score, South Carolina 28, Vanderbilt 7. We'll see you again next week back at williams Bryce. When South Carolina takes on Eli Drinkwitz in the Missouri Tigers. See you then. <laughs>